Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Matt Horn is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. I was chosen by God. I have apostles. I help the blind to see. I save souls. But unlike the chosen one sent before, God will never let you take me. Uh, hey, Matt. It's uh, Wyatt Bowen uh, from, uh, from Far Cry 5. I was just uh, calling to uh, you know, get our interview going. I, I guess I missed you. Maybe you're outside, you know, grabbing grabbing some groceries or something like that. Anyway, uh, give me a call back when you can. On the line, we have Wyatt Bowen talking to us. From where are you talking to us from, Wyatt? I'm calling in from uh, Montreal, Canada. Oh, wonderful. Beautiful sunny day today. Actually, the past two weeks have just been dreary and rainy, and finally we have a nice sunny day, so I'm very happy. Very good. See, I've always wanted to go out to Canada. I am going to go out to Canada. Good, you should definitely come. We've got so many great little areas, BC and Alberta and Quebec and Ontario. I mean, all of them are great, you know, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and they're all like their own little pockets of difference, you know, even though we're right next to each other. So, I've told you how the podcast works more or less, haven't I? Mm, Yeah. Yeah. For anyone who's never heard of the podcast before, I love the Canadian people, by the way. This is what happens. Hello, and welcome to Map Horn Meets. I am a computer, the Hawk 1000. I am here to tell you how the podcast works. Throughout the interview, both Matt and the interviewee will be selecting objects for use in the final part of the podcast. It should be noted at this point that the interviewee's responses are real and at time of recording, and none of the objects have been selected beforehand. Thank you, and goodbye. And that's it. So, how confident are you feeling, Wyatt? Confident as can be, you know. (laughs) (laughs) God, you won't be by the end. (laughs) Oh, that's it. So, obviously, why we've got you here, Wyatt why we've got you here is because of Far Cry 5. Woo! Do I hear a (laughs) whoop-whoop? Yes, exactly. What can I say about Far Cry 5? It's the next instalment in the Far Cry franchise, which is fine, fantastic. And it's basically, uh, it's all about religion and cults and Greg Brick playing a cult leader and... What else can we say, Wyatt? <laughs> <laughs> it's about, you know, it's about, <laughs> about cults and religion and blowing people up, uh, <laughs> throwing shovels at people. Uh, you know, it's a real it's a real nice little mix of everything that people want these days. <laughs> now, obviously, it's set in more or less the present day, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I have to be really, really careful with this. One of the questions I did have, because obviously you see the trailers and you're thinking, there's got to be some sort of Trump nod somewhere. (laughs) Is there? (laughs) I could not confirm anything. (laughs) I would not be able to confirm entirely. But I think in today's climate, you know, video game designers and writers, you know, they always like to put in their little nods here and there, you know, and it's very, very possible. So, obviously, it's a Ubisoft game. Yeah. You obviously have worked with Ubisoft for some time. What was production of the game like for you? Uh, So, before Far Cry 5 became Far Cry 5, it had like a, you know, internal name. Because the way it works is that there's, you know, there's different groups working on different games. And so they use project names internally so that no one else can, like, talk about each other's games or know what the, what each other's games are. So in the start of it, uh, about two years ago, maybe, uh, they started doing the voice recordings. And they needed guide tracks for all the different characters so they could kind of build something and show it to Ubisoft. 
So my start was I got to play about like five or six different characters uh, who eventually got cast by other other people, but I got to come in and sort of design voices and design the characters. They had one professor character, and they wanted him to kind of be like Doc from uh, what's it called, uh, Back to the Future. So I got to do like a little bit of a little bit of him in a character. They they had like another character who was a chef, and they wanted him to be kind of like Gordon Ramsay, obviously from Montana or whatever. So that was like my start in the series, and then later on, uh, they called me in to do these uh, like zombified followers of the cult. You know, that was like a lot of fun. So that was like my main kind of piecing of this game. It was you know such a blast. Like everybody who works at Ubisoft is such a like pleasure to work with. I can never complain about anybody who I work with there. Everyone's so much fun and uh, great to work with. So. Hope that answers that. Mm, mm. <laughs> Did you get to do any mocap? I've always been a, a like a pretty um, not strict voice actor, but I've, you know I've just always kind of stuck with voice acting. You know, the last ten years of my career, and uh, so I didn't get to do any mocap on the on the project actually. But you have obviously done mocap before. <laughs> uh, I've done a little bit. Mm. Um, I'm mostly I'm mostly a voice actor. With regards to the actual franchise, did you know much about the Far Cry franchise before you signed on? You must have. One of my uh, great friends, Alex Farouche, he got to play, uh, man, what was the character's name? Um, in Far Cry 3, my friend Alex was one of the main characters in, in that series. Whoops. What was his name? Uh, he's one of the kidnapped kids. So I knew from that, more about Far Cry, you know, with, you know, Voss was like such a big, uh, you know, villain in Far Cry 3. And then Far Cry 4 was another, you know, really big game. Such a huge uh, uh, platform for Ubisoft. And then, you know, I did a little bit of work for uh, for Primal. And then uh, and then this one came out and it was like, you know, okay, here comes the next, you know, big installment in the franchise and everything like that. You know, we have a pretty good idea in Montreal of Far Cry because it's just been such a big game here. Going back to Alex, he played Riley, didn't he? Yes, Riley. There mm. we go. That's his, that was his name, Riley. It's it's always so funny with, with video games, right? Because there's so much secrecy until it comes out. You can't say, you know, what you're working on or who you're working with. So, like, when Alex booked the game, now he lives in Toronto, but he was living in Montreal at the time. And, uh, you know, he, he booked the game, but he couldn't tell us. So what he was like, oh, you know, I'm busy working on this. And so after like two years when the game finally came out, he was like, hey, guys, I just wanted to let you know that I played Riley. We were like, oh, my God, it's so cool. You know, like, you know, that's why you were gone so often. We didn't see you. So uh, it's always funny with actors in video games how, like, you know, there's so much secrecy and you only find out that they worked on something, you know, years later. <laughs> I can sort of see and you can stop me if, if I'm talking absolute rubbish. But I can just sort of see every year they have sort of like a Ubisoft Far Cry party where everybody who's been in the franchise just gets together and has a drink. <laughs> if there is, if there is, it's quite secretive and I have not been invited. I'm still waiting for my invite. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of every game, uh, the the Ubisoft crew gets together for, like, you know, they'll go and have, like, you know, like a finishing up party because uh, Ubisoft, at least in Montreal, there's... Something like 3,000, 4,000 employees. There might even be more than that. And so what they do in the, in the building is they create sections for each game. So once a game is finished, everybody gets shuffled to another area. So like once Far Cry 5 finished, you know, people from Far Cry 5 went to go work on <clears throat> whatever the next game yeah. is, the next big one, you know, if there's a, you know, whatever's next. So, so that's what happens. And then before that happens, they have like a little party, you know, everybody gets together designers get to talk with script writers and stuff like that so there's always a little thing there did you notice that i had to cough when you said the next project <laughs> next project yeah. <laughs> far cry 6 um <laughs> i cannot confirm yeah. nor deny. <laughs> i do have a question about the franchise is it linked in any way there's a rumor that they're sort of not hugely linked but sort of connected as far as I know, from talking to writers and, like, you know, project managers for the game, there is, like, a, a thread that, you know, sort of loosely connects all of the games. I mean, Primal was, you know, basically, like, their, their nod to having, like, a full-on, uh, this is, like, the precursor to what would, you know, eventually become Far Cry. 
it's not like it's you know Star Wars one, two, three, four. It's just you know kind of like okay, here's here's what happened in Primal. Here's what happened in one. Here's what happened in two. Like I said, like a common you know thread throughout. Are there any sort of funny anecdotes you could share about the production of the game? The funniest thing for me is when I got in uh, for for the final recording of of my. Uh, uh, little zombie characters in Far Cry, not zombies, like just like brainwashed. I usually, I tend to play creatures and monsters in certain video games and cartoons and stuff. So you know, when I when I when I got called in, Chris Adago, the, the one of the one of the casting directors there, she's so fantastic. She calls me up. She's like, so you know, uh, you're coming in, you're playing, uh, you're playing some you know creature things or whatever. And she's like, well, you know, <laughs> we knew who to call Wyatt. I was like, ah, oh, you know, it's so flattering. You know, thank you so much. You know, I'm so happy to come in and work. We go upstairs and we find out that they're not actual creatures, <laughs> that they're just like brainwashed humans. And so we go up and we start recording. And uh, and Simon Peacock, one of Montreal's, uh, uh, you know, premier directors, he stops me for a second. And he goes, hey, Wyatt, um, for, the, for these characters, do you mind putting your uh, finger in your mouth? for the recording <laughs> it's like oh <laughs> what what do you mean he's like yeah yeah well i know that for like these kinds of characters i directed uh, you know on outlast uh, you know we had zombies and stuff and it, and it really helped with with getting that like salivating sound by putting a finger in your mouth and i and i, I took a second i was like you just you know you're just you're messing with me right simon and he was like no 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 <laughs> so for the rest of the recording for this like two hour two and a half hour session you know, I had my index finger shoved in my mouth just so I could get like a like a real kind of like reverberated, salivated sound. It was so weird, but that would be like my anecdote for for the recording session. I can't move going on now. Exactly, exactly <laughs> like that. <laughs> when you fell the wall, <laughs> I'm going through the gun quite close. Sorry, what was that? I couldn't quite understand what you said. Oh, Ubisoft, I'm, I'm available. You hear that, Ubisoft? Yeah. <laughs> so, obviously, we didn't pick an object uh, to start off when we were talking about Far Cry 5, so we can do it now. Yeah. If you if you uh, could pick an object that encompasses Far Cry 5, what would it be? Well, it's funny because... Um... If if I had to think of Far Cry Five, and it, it's really it was it was just something that got got released recently. It's the bazooka gun with the shuffle. <laughs> I think that kind of encompasses the madness of Far Cry Five. <laughs> a bazooka that has a shovel as its as its projectile. <laughs> I think that that's what I would pick: shovel bazooka. A shovel bazooka. <laughs> a bazooka shovel. <laughs> Bazooka shovel, yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's now time for your second object. Mm, okay. You now get a choice, Wyatt. You've got a choice between my 5x5 five five signed photograph or what's in the mystery box. Matt, come on, you can't tell me with the mystery box. We're always going to go with the mystery box. Oh, dear. So, okay, so just to confirm to everybody, months and months and months ago, there used to be a husky puppy in the box. <laughs> There was. There was a husky puppy in the box. Okay. Uh, but sadly, that husky puppy grew into a big, big thing, so I have to sort of keep an eye on it. And It's not in the box anymore. It's grown up. It's big. So, we're back to square one, really, with what's in the mystery box. And for you, Wyatt Bowen, what's in the mystery box? It is a 5x5 five five signed photograph of Justin Trudeau. Justin Trudeau! Woohoo! But it's sort of in his mmm phase. Okay. It's his mmm phase. Back when he was doing somersaults down the stairs as his, as his party trick. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> okay, so Justin Trudeau. This is looking quite good, actually. Where do we get these objects from? So the question that goes with Justin Trudeau is what made you want to be an actor in the first place? And more importantly, a voiceover artist. I started when I was six years old as an actor, and uh, you know the big the big thanks goes to my mother Don Ford, who uh, who is an actress as well. She's been working, uh, gosh, in the industry for uh, man 35, 40 years almost. I think thirty five years at least, maybe thirty years. Sorry. And uh, so one day uh, she brought me on a meeting with her and her agent. And her agent looked at me and was like, "You got to get him in film." So that was the start 
of me getting into uh, into the industry. I mean, I grew up on cartoons and video games my whole life, and I always loved doing voices. You know, I always, you know, did like impressions of like Stewie Griffin and SpongeBob SquarePants and uh, all that kind of stuff. Around the age of, after working for a few years, around the age of, I guess, uh, 12, I think it was, you know, I got really, really into doing cartoons. And then about, oh gosh, uh, five or six years ago, I hunkered down and told my agent, I was like, you know, I really, really want to do voice work. That's the thing that I have the most passion for. Every time I go into the studio, you know, you get such a high in front of the mic. I think, you know, having my mother who got me into it and then, like, having the basis of all the cartoons that I grew up on, you know, watching uh, Cow and Chicken, Johnny Bravo, uh, Reboot, um, all of those really kind of, you know, created all those things together, created, like, a foundation for what eventually would become my, you know, 20-year career <laughs> at this point. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, pretty much it. And, you know, hopefully, you know, there's still another 20 years to go. And, uh, you know, I still love it every single day that I'm in studio. Uh, and uh, and I have such a blast with everybody in the city. And I'm so grateful and, and happy to be able to be one of the, you know, uh, a person that's able to do a job that he loves and, you know, be in, a, in an industry that's, you know, so, uh, so much fun to work in. You know, it's still a job and everything like that, but... You know, I couldn't think of doing anything else. You know, it's really just the fun factor of, you know, being able to, you know, goof off and get paid to do something that you really love. So, mm. yeah. <laughs> well, now it's time for my favorite part of the podcast. Yeah. Okay. Mm. It is the quick fire round, which isn't a quick fire round, but we're saying it's a quick fire round. And this is the part okay. of the podcast where you get to choose from one to three objects in exchange for one to three questions about your career. Okay. Mm. You get to choose these objects from the imaginary storage unit, the ISU of objects. <laughs> We've been doing this too long, Wyatt. You have no idea. Uh, so how many objects would you like? Let's do, uh, let's do three. Okay, we'll go with the three. Uh, okay, we'll go with three. That's not a problem. Uh, what three objects would you like? Here's the pressure. I've got mm. to pick any, just random, any random object. Any random object you like, yeah. Uh, okay, let's take a, a tire iron. Yeah. Let's take uh, a, uh, what, what are they called? Um, uh, the, the, the typical Ikea chair. Okay. The squishy ones with the, uh, with the, the full body, the full wood body. And lastly, let's go with the tube of toothpaste. Toothpaste. Okay. Okay, no the problem. I've written it down. Okay, so the first object, or the first question of the quick fire round, which isn't a quick fire round, but we're saying it's a quick fire round, <laughs> is a bit of a personal one to me, actually. Would you believe okay. it? Mm. You'll like this, I think. I hope. Unfortunately, most people will probably be aware, uh, I am turning 30 in June. Okay. <laughs> what one piece of advice would you give to me? Turning 30. <laughs> Turning 30. I would definitely, uh, you know, check in with your doctor. Make sure everything uh, is, uh, you know, tip-top shape. <laughs> uh, what else could you do? See your doctor. I think that would, you know, pretty much be, like, the most important thing. You know, I think I think once you uh, reach a certain age, you know, even me at 25. Or, sorry, I'm 27. I'm going to be 27 in June. And at 25, I got my first blood test, other than, like, being in the hospital a couple times. Right. It was my first time going in to get checked up and get a blood test and I tell you I didn't find out anything you know I'm all clean and everything like my bill of health is great my doctor was like yeah I think it's about time we do a blood test you know just to see where you stand and I never wanted to do one because I hate needles and stuff I ended up falling unconscious on the on the table from the blood being removed from my body <laughs> but uh, I think definitely getting a nice clean bill of health from your doctor you know uh you know just don't forget to cough I think that would be my best advice. Oh dear. Ah, oh dear. <laughs> Your second question of the quick five round, which isn't a quick five round, but we're saying it's a quick five round. Funny enough, I saw this on your IMDb. I actually looked on your mum's IMDb as well, um, oh, cool. whilst, whilst you were mentioning it. And obviously, I have to throw in the fact of if you were a 90s kid, like obviously me and you, yeah. more or less, everyone will have heard of Arthur. Obviously, which 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 your mum did voices for, but more importantly, with yourself, Mona the Vampire. Mona the Vampire. <laughs> well, 
What would you like to know? <laughs> <laughs> How on earth did you get into that project? So Mona the Vampire was, uh, at the time, next to Arthur, I believe Mona was like our second biggest cartoon that was happening at the time in uh, at CinArt. So I went in and auditioned. I was directed by this great, uh, this great guy, um, uh, Andy Green. And uh, I got in, I came in, and I did a couple little voices here and there. The, the voices are split up over a couple of episodes. I don't remember the numbers specifically. But uh, that, was, that was a lot of fun working on that project. I kind of wish that it stuck around a little bit longer than it did. I loved watching it as a kid and then, you know, being able to be on the show. It's like, oh, this is so awesome. Everybody was going in for it. So it was really quite a, a blessing to be able to be on a project that was so big for Montreal. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's Mona the Vampire. <laughs> <laughs> One of the weird things, Wyatt, and I'm happy yes. to, to divulge this at the age of 30, is obviously I've been going back in my head to memories of my childhood of stuff like Mona the Vampire, Arthur, yeah. Reboot, which you've obviously mentioned, Animorphs, Goosebumps. Uh, the yeah. interesting thing is they're all Canadian in some level. They're all Canadian. Mm. Isn't that weird? <laughs> It's it's pretty it's pretty crazy that like back in the nineties we had such a big a big influx of like really really popular shows. The other one the other one we had was Are You Afraid of the Dark? Oh yeah, yeah, that's what, yes, of course. Um, we had uh, Beast Wars was huge. What else did we have? We had a bunch of animes too. Like Dragon Ball Z was was dubbed in English in Vancouver. We have, and I mean we we still do. We have a lot of big cartoons. I wouldn't say they're as as big as they used to be. Uh, you know, we have. Um, Total Drama Island is on now. Uh, we have, uh, you know, Bakugan is is dubbed in Toronto in English. Uh, you know, we still have like a, you know, an, an, an industry, but I wouldn't say it's as, what's the word, um, uh, influential as it used to be. I mean, Reboot and Beast Wars, those were like my two biggest like Canadian shows. And I was like, yeah, we, we have those. Those are ours. Your third and final question of the quick five round, which isn't a quick five round, but we're saying it's a quick five round, is... Which actors have been your favorites to work with and why? And who would you like to work with in the future? Oh my gosh, that's a tough one. Who are my favorite? Okay, so everybody, I have to say this, everybody that I work with is so fantastic. Everybody who works in Montreal is, um, uh, you know, a real delight and loves doing what they do. But I think for overall, the, the, most, the most fun that I have, I'm going to say it's two people. The most fun... Uh, I have is usually working with my with my buddy Mark Camacho. He's always he's always directing me, but he is he is such a kind kind person to work with, and we always have such a blast working together. One of my favorite things with Mark is I'll read a line or whatever, and I and I look over at him, and he'll do a yeah okay, and I and I ask him like oh what was, what was up? He was like well that's not the way I heard it, but no your your reading was valid. <laughs> One of my favorite things that he always says no that was a valid reading, and then. As well, we have, I think, the most talented voice actor of all the people I've worked with, out of all the people that I know, um, Rick Jones. This man can do every voice, every gender, every age, every type of animal, every type of creature you can think of. This, this man is so incredible and has always been an influence for me when I work. Anytime I've worked with him, he's always been a joy. He's directed me. I've worked alongside him. And he's just so so talented and so humble and so much fun to work with. In terms of people that I would love to work with, I would I would absolutely adore working with uh, Tara Strong. You know, she's worked on so many projects that I you know I grew up on. You know, Fairly Odd Parents and you know uh, playing uh, Bubbles in uh, Powerpuff Girls. Who else would I? Lo I would also love love to work with David Kay, who is uh, both uh, Tara Strong and David Kay are both Canadians, uh, but they moved to L.A. David Kay worked on Ratchet and Clank, my favorite video game of all time. Uh, he played Clank, and I would love, absolutely love to work with him one day. And uh, you know, hopefully it happens. You know, you never know. But those would be my two two most influential and most fun people to work with, and two people that I would love to work with uh, eventually. <laughs> So, we come to the best part of the podcast, which is the improv bit. Okay. So, to recall, um, you're going to have to help me out here, Wyatt. To All recall, right. we've got the bazooka, which fires the shovel. Uh, we've got the Justin Trudeau picture. Tire iron. Yeah. Yeah, the Ikea chair and yeah. toothpaste. And toothpaste, that's correct. And with those objects... Sorry, Ubisoft. 
with those objects, you've now got to pitch to me an idea, God forbid, for the new Far Cry project. Okay, all right. So, Eric, uh, yeah, nice to meet you. Basically, we've been working on this new idea for this brand new Far Cry game. It's a little bit more radical, definitely really different. So, it takes place in Ikea. And, uh, you know, you start off in the, uh, the bathroom section of Ikea. It's very it's treacherous. And, uh, you know, you're on your way to trying to find a uh, loose tube of toothpaste uh, because your teeth and breath are horrible. Uh, so that's your first, uh, first step into the game. You know, you obviously have your trusty uh, shovel bazooka with you, you know, just in case of, uh, you know, anything popping up. Uh, you know, you, you need to find your tire iron so you can leave Ikea. Obviously, you're, you know, flat tire. <laughs> Duh. And then, uh, you know, the final item uh, that your, your, you know, the character uh, needs to find is a signed uh, photograph of uh, Justin Trudeau, uh, which is obviously uh, locked away in the manager's office uh, past the um, self, self-checkout self area in the Ikea. So uh, if you guys are all for it, we'd love to get started on this project as soon as possible. We think we've got a lot of great ideas here. And uh, we'd love to get started as soon as possible. So what do you guys think? Mm. Okay. Which voice cast would you use? That's a good question. Oh, boy. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. If I had... Okay. So if I had my ultimate choice of people, you know, voice actor or not, I would definitely love to call in... Uh, I would love to call in... I think John Hamm would be great uh, to have in there maybe as, like, a lead character or a bad guy. You know, I just love him. And then I think, I, other than that, like, I think I would cast, you know, all Montreal people just so I could work with, you know, all my friends and everything like that. You know, you, could, you know, you know, call my mom, call in Mark Camacho, you know, call in Simon, call in, you know, Angela Galupo, uh, call in, uh, you know, Elizabeth Neal, you know, call in uh, Jonathan Silver, um, you know, like just like a foray of, uh, of names, uh, you know, uh, Eleanor Noble, um, who else we got, uh, you know, Patricia Somerset, you know, I'd call in, you know, the A team of Montreal just to put this whole Ikea Far Cry together. <laughs> Ikea Far Cry. It starts off basically being a bit like Duke Nukem Forever. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then it just takes a deep, deep turn into very, very dark territory because, you know, it's Ikea and everybody gets angry at each other. It's a very stressful place, so, you know, the anxiety levels go up very, very quickly. There would be an anxiety meter, I think, in this game, too, just because of it being an Ikea, so... <laughs> I was thinking more of an idea that Canada tries to invade Sweden. Ooh! Oh, that's a good one. Because <laughs> then, then you can have the Ikea resistance. <laughs> <laughs> but they're so busy putting together their guns. Yes. They don't have as much time as the Canadians do. But then the Canadians are so nice about it, so it's a bit of it's a bit of a it's a bit of a stalemate game. Oh dear. Well, <laughs> well, Wyatt, it's um, obviously a pleasure, obviously having you here. You now yeah, get a great time. you now get a one minute plug. Okay. Yeah, to plug obviously Far Cry Five and anything else you've got coming up. Okay. Uh, so to everybody out there, you know, you know, grab grab your copy of Far Cry Five. It's such a cool game. It would be uh, an immense. Uh, sense of gratitude if you if you went on and played and you know you know get to hear all of the talented people that worked on it you know and uh, enjoy the the hard labor of all of the people at ubisoft who put in you know so many hours of their time to you know create such a cool game and in terms of uh, you know everything that's coming up with me you know i've got a cartoon coming out in a, in a year or so uh, called chop chop ninja and uh you know you'll be able to hear me on um, rainbow six outbreak i play a lot of the creatures on that and, uh, you know, there's, you know, games coming out, you know, throughout the time. I can't say which games they are, so you're just going to have to go on the IMDb page and check them out. And uh, uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> mm, mm. Well, why it's been a pleasure interviewing you. It's been you. a real pleasure, Matt. Thank you so much for having me. That's not a problem. Thanks very much for your time. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.